Welcome to Cool Talk and the history of the ancient Mayans. Now, I said before that I would talk about the Aztecs, but I'm going to begin with the Mayans because they came first. And the Mayans are fascinating people. There are about six to seven million Mayans still around today who speak 29 different Mayan languages. Many people look at the natives of Central America and don't realize that they have resisted over a millennium of persecution, colonialism, and genocide. They are still resilient people. They are still here. And at one time, they inhabited one of the largest empires on earth. At least 4,000 years ago, there were farming villages all over Central America, and then came the Olmecs around 1500 BCE. The Olmecs were, are known today for those giant heads they left behind. 20-ton basalt heads that they hauled through the jungles. Now, the Olmecs had a numbering system. They were multi-social. They had farming, huge trade centers, and they were a huge influence on the Mayans, but they faded away mysteriously. The Mayans acquired many influences from the Olmecs. They built larger and larger settlements around 1000 BCE. Now, the Mayans were the first civilization on Earth to have a complex numerical system that included the number zero. There's a symbol for zero right there. Now each unit is a dot, and when you get to the number five, it's represented by a bar. As you can see here, the number 19 is four dots and three bars of five. The bottom units here are units of one. The second one is units of 20. The third tier is units of 20 times 20, 400. The next tier is 400 times 20, which is 8,000. And this is how you write the number 96,410. You can continue this system and go into the millions and the Mayans needed these large numbers because they were obsessed with space and time. They created a writing. Unfortunately, the Spaniards burnt all the writings the Mayans had and we lost about 2000 years of history. Fortunately, some of these writings survived and we were able to decipher them. This is impressive because the Mayans only used the naked eye, no telescopes. And the Mayan annual calendar is only off by our calendar by two seconds. Imagine that. If you were a priest that studied the stars, you had enormous power. You were an advisor to the king. Now look at our calendar and compare it to this. This is a Mayan calendar. It was made of stone. There were three calendars, lunar, solar, and the count of days, and they all interlocked. Now the count of days predicted that the world would end December 21st, 2012. And lucky for us, the Mayans were wrong. The Mayans believe that a Mayan god created them. They also believed in an underworld, Chibalba. When you died, you went to Chibalba, a frightening place, and you had to climb through a world tree to get out of there, unless you gave yourself up as a human sacrifice, and then you would go straight to heaven. Smaller sacrifices included taking a maguey thorn, piercing your tongue, and pulling a rope right through it. If you were a man, you could pierce your penis and let the blood flow. Now, they were big on tattoos, on scarification. The Mayans were, well, they believed that a sloped head was beautiful. So they would take boars and try to force a baby skull to be sloped. They also believed that being cross-eyed was beautiful, so they hung a little stone before a child's eyes. And there was an advantage to having a sloped forehead because you could put a strap on it and carry things on your back. Remember, the Mayans did not have beast of burdens like donkeys and horses. And if you were a noble who did no work, well, you use your sloped forehead to carry huge headdresses. Mayans built huge palaces, pyramids, temples to rival anything that the Egyptians ever built. They had roads that would go hundreds of miles in different directions. Very impressive considering they never even invented the wheel. Now there was a monarchy in place by 300 BCE. If you were a noble or rich, well of course you were carried around and you didn't do any work. If you were a commoner, you had to work really hard. You had to go out there and farm. If you were a man at home, you would do the crafts at night and women would weave cloth. Now, if you broke the law, you were taken to court and your sentence was carried out immediately. They didn't have any jails. The sentence could be a fine or slavery or even death. Now, what's interesting is if you were a commoner, you had better luck than a noble. If a noble broke, the, broke a law, his punishment was even harsher because he's supposed to be an example. There were great city-states. 
Camina La Julia, Tikal, and Chichen Itza. There was also La Danta, the largest pyramid in volume at that time. The Mayans loved art. They would carve images on stone called stella. They also painted murals with very bright colors. Many of these pyramids had four sets of stairs, 91 stairs on each side and one big platform. Add that and you get 365, the number of days in a year. This rubber ball is centuries old. Now, the Mayans and other Central American cultures would play a ball game. The Mayans would play, you had to kick the ball without using your hands at all, use your hips, your head, through a stone center. And the losing team, their captain had his heart pulled out. It was this kind of human sacrifice that caused the Spaniards in the 16th century to burn all the codices, all the writings that the Mayans had. And they considered them pagan and evil. In 1952, a pyramid in Palenque was discovered with a tomb of Lord Pakal, who died in 683 AD. Look at him here with that jade mask. Scholars managed to decipher the Mayan writing, and we can read about their culture today. Now, trading in jade or the stone obsidian was very lucrative. And here's a little trivia. The rebel planet in the movie Star Wars, if you look at the background, you'll see a Mayan temple. Now, keep in mind that the Mayans never centralized themselves. There were many, many city-states just like the Greeks. And over and over and over, you would see that many of these city-states would be very populated, very powerful, but then they would be abandoned, left alone. Why? There are many possibilities. In 535 AD, Ilopango volcano erupted in El Salvador, and the survivors abandoned the city. Now, some cities show signs of abandonment due to apparently internal uprisings. Now, the Mayans, like the Olmecs before them, practice slash and burn agriculture. It means that you chop down trees in, in an area, you burn it all, let the burnt trees feed the earth its nutrients for two years, and then you grow food. Now, the problem with this method is that when the population grows too fast or too much, you run out of land. Erosion sets in, then you get overburdened soil, and you starve. The Mayan Golden Age, with its civilization and pyramids and great trade routes, was between the years 400 to 900 AD, about 500 years, twice the age of the United States. In the Kingdom of Copan in 426 AD, there was the Yakukmo dynasty, and King Huaxaclajun was a master builder. Unfortunately, he was betrayed by his ally, the king of Quirigua, King Cactilin, who got together with another king in a delegation and they formed an alliance. They wanted to control the trade route, so they captured Huaxaclajun and beheaded him. So now they control two kingdoms, Copan and Quirigua. Unfortunately, ineffective rulers took over later and Copan and Quirigua declined. Tikal continued as a major trade route for a while and King Yaxnun Ain died he was buried right here. He was cremated and burned, and nine youths were sacrificed along with him, including a six-year-old boy. By 900 AD, the Mayan Empire had died out, and all we had left were smaller city-states, smaller kingdoms. So the Mayans didn't decline just because of the Spaniards. They wouldn't come into play for about another 600 years. In fact, in 900 AD, Spain was mostly part of the Muslim Empire. Yet in the 16th century, the Spanish did come, dooming whatever chances the Mayans had of assimilating and bouncing back. The Europeans came in with their new systemic racism, viewing the nations in the Americas as subhuman people or not human at all. And when they arrived, in a little over a century, millions died. How many? It's impossible to say. Some claim 50 million. So 10 years after 1492, in 1502, Christopher Columbus himself lands at Guanaja on the Bay Islands off of Honduras, looking for gold as usual. Now he sent his brother Bartholomew inland to explore. Now Bartholomew encounters a trading vessel from Yucatan Peninsula. He goes in there, takes the vessel, whatever goods he could, and they took off. They even grabbed the captain to use him as an interpreter. 
Columbus was the first European to encounter Honduras, Nicaragua, Panama, and Costa Rica. And if he would have crossed Panama a few more days uh, towards the west, he would have discovered the Pacific Ocean and learned the big mistake that he was not in the Indies. Instead, he's chased out of Panama by the natives. He goes off in his ship, gets wrecked across Jamaica, is marooned there for about a year, rescued, and he died in 1506. In 1511, a Spanish ship got shipwrecked on Jamaica. The men there made their way to the Yucatan, where they were captured by the Mayans. The captain and four others were sacrificed and eaten. A couple of Spaniards escaped, including Gonzalo Guerrero. He ran away but was captured by King Nachan Khan. Now, King Nachan Khan made Gonzalo Guerrero his slave. But a couple of years later, well, he took warmly to him and Gonzalo Guerrero became a Mayan warlord, married Nachan Khan's daughter, and had a couple of kids, the first mestizos. In 1517, Francisco Hernandez de Cordoba leaves Cuba with a small fleet. He and his men reached the Yucatan. They ransacked the gold from the temples. They got into skirmishes with the Mayans. He lost over 50 men, was wounded, returned to Cuba, and died along the way. But he managed to write a letter to the governor acknowledging the gold in the Mayan lands. In 1519, Hernán Cortés arrives at Cozumel. He tears down the temples, raises crosses, defeats the Mayan villages, gathers native allies, and takes over the city of Chantal. Then he goes north to conquer the Aztecs. In 1522, Cortés sends one of his men, Pedro de Alvarado, to deal with some Mayan uprisings. Alvarado takes over Soconusco, then he captures two Kichi lords and burns them to death, and he burns down the city of Kumarkaj. He forms alliances, fights the kingdoms, and fights the Kachichek, who resisted for six years. Now, the Mayans were very, very tough people. How tough? Let me tell you. When the Spaniards fought the Mam people under King Kaibil Balam, well, the Mayans had to retreat into a fortress. Now, the the Spaniards were outside for months and months, but the Mayans would not give in until finally the Spanish entered the fort. There were 1,800 dead natives, and the surviving natives were eating the corpses. Alvarado takes over city after city, and he conquers Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador. But he wasn't satisfied yet. He got together 500 men and 13 ships. His plan was to go to China and the Spice Islands. But before he could, he had an accident. Before he could sail off to China, he had to deal with a Mayan uprising. But then he fell under his horse and was crushed to death. It would take two centuries for the Spanish to take over the Mayans. And this was followed by centuries of exploitation and colonialism. Now this transformed the land into a mixture of indigenous and Spanish cities, Spanish government, Catholicism, new technology, livestock, iron, steel, and lots and lots of mestizos. In the late 1970s, 440 Mayan villages were destroyed. Between 45 to 60,000 people were killed by the Guatemalan government, backed up by the CIA, who believed that the Mayans were harboring rebels. In Rio Negro, where the Guatemalan government wanted to build a dam, the Mayans refused to relocate. 440 people were killed in Rio Negro, including children. And the dam, well, it was built. Unfortunately, it also eroded the land. But the Mayans go on, about 7 million of them today, in Mexico, Guatemala, Belize, Salvador, and Honduras. That's it for now. This is Cool Talk. My next video will be about the Aztecs. Now, before I sign off, however, I want to talk about the movie Apocalypto. It's the only movie that I know made about the Mayans. Now, it begins with a quote from Will Durant. A great civilization is not conquered from without until it has destroyed itself from within, indicating that the movie takes place during the collapse of the Mayan civilization in 900 AD. Now, what did I like about the movie? Well, it looks like you're in another planet with all these details and strange clothes, scarification, the tattoos, the jade, the painting. I like the tender moments between Jaguar Paw and his wife. The people were primitive, but I still like the details that took place over here. I liked 
everything, the splendor. I like this scene with the quarry and how they use crushed stone, the human sacrifice. I like these priests with their clothes. And look at the headdress of the king. He's carrying a wall on his back. Look at the spectacle. And I love the chase when Jaguar Paul was running. I did not like that this little girl appears to be dying of smallpox. There were no smallpox for another half millennium. The Amayas were not so primitive as they show them in the movie. The Mayans practice human sacrifice, but not at this level. The Aztecs did. But what I really hated was the scene where the Spaniards show up. There were no Spanish conquistadores for another 600 years. This was especially inaccurate, outrageous even. It also indicates that the Spanish came to save these natives from their barbaric ways. I just didn't like that message. So all in all, my opinion, good movie, bad history. That's my view. That's it for now. Comment below or better yet, subscribe. This is Cool Talk.